In this video, we're going to talk about what we do when we have a particularly large, ugly integral that has a lot of sines and cosines in the integrand. So trig integrals with sine and cosine of x. All right, so if it's of this form, it's going to look something like this. It's going to have an integral sine to some power of x times cosine of some power of x. It's got to, got to fit in this template here might be sine to the fifth of x times cosine squared of x or, or something along those lines. All right, so if we have this, then uh, you'll recall kind of our, our general uh, concept, our general idea is to save one of these guys, save a single term of sine or cosine or one of these terms and kind of save it to the end. And that's gonna be your du. We're gonna do a u substitution where the term that you've saved is, is going to be the du put at the end of the integral. Now, uh, here's the strategy when you're dealing with sine and cosine, and I'll explain why this, works in uh, why this works in just a second, and you'll see it very clearly when we do an example. But for now, just trust me that the term that we're going to save and we're going to put in our pocket that's going to be our du that we're going to save is going to be the term that has the odd power. It's important that the term is odd that we're saving and we'll, we'll see why that that works out in just a minute All right now once you've saved that odd term and pulled it off to the side and that's your du then we're going to convert everybody who's left the remaining terms into u's now you might can kind of guess why we've chosen an odd power because if you have let's say like a sign to the fifth power if you peel off one of those signs because it's an odd power then what's left is sine to the fourth, it's an even power, and you can use trig identities to turn those into cosines. And like I said, we'll, we'll do some examples coming up shortly. So these are the two steps. Save the term with an odd power as the du, and convert everybody who's remaining into u's. So you should have at the end of the day an integral of some stuff in terms of u with a du back here at the end. All right, so let's look at an example, and hopefully this will, will clarify some things. All right, so look, look at this guy. We have integral of sine to the third power of x times cosine squared of x. A lot of terms going on here. I'm going to save one term as the du, and who would you save? Who, what term would you save as the du? We're going to save one of the sine terms because sine here is raised to an odd power. So it'll look something like this, the integral of I don't really know what's coming here first but I know back here at the end I'm gonna save a sine x dx All right now who's remaining uh, up here on the front half of the integrand here well there was a sine squared remaining from this term because we pulled out one of the signs but there's still two left and here's a cosine squared uh, obviously that's coming here All right now if this guy right here is your du then you can see that the u must be something with a cosine right must be something with a cosine now if there's a, a, a plus or minus difference that that's not a huge issue we can deal with those at the end of the problem but I, I'm fairly certain that our u would have to be something with a cosine in it if this is going to be our du so these guys are fine because here's cosine squared so I've got u squared du roughly I mean, again we have to fix some negatives but but you basically have u squared du but what are we going to do about this guy well here's a nice thing that i noticed these signs these signs shouldn't be there they should be cosines not signs because the signs derivative is not sine but but here's here's the nice thing i noticed because it's sine squared to an even power we can convert those into cosines using that trig identity that we know well. We know that uh, sine squared x plus cosine squared x equals one. That's a trig identity that we know well. And so we could rewrite this as the integral of parentheses. Let's see, we would have, um, let's see here, we'd have one minus cosine squared of x right we replace sine squared with one minus cosine squared from the trig identity times cosine squared x then at the end we have a sine x dx so we've done exactly what we set out to do right we've 
save the term with the odd powers the du and now everybody who's left in is in terms of u is in terms of cosine so this looks great um, now now technically there is that issue of the the uh, plus or minus so let's go ahead and fix that if u is equal to cosine the du should technically be negative sine x right negative sine x so the way we would account for that is quite simple um, we'll, we'll insert a negative here so that the du is correct and we'll put a negative on the outside uh, to balance everything all right so let's rewrite that we'd have now the in, uh, negative the integral of 1 minus u squared times u squared and then the end part right here is just du right that's your du negative sine x uh, dx that'll be your du right there so we've done a u substitution so now all we have to do is finish this guy out so um, I'll tell you what let me um, let me make up a, another card here no I'll erase some of this okay. I actually have everything saved on the previous card so we can look back at it in just a minute okay. all right uh, let's see here this guy right here would be the integral, or I'm sorry, negative the integral of, if we distributed this guy, um, we would have u squared minus u to the fourth du. And this guy's integral, I can even erase this now. This guy's integral would be negative u to the third over three minus u to the fifth over five plus c and we're almost done just hang with me we're almost done um, this is our answer except for our, our final step we need to go back and fill in what our choice of u was okay so here is that card we started with uh, my choice of u was cosine and my integram was in terms of cosine and then the du was in terms of sine so i'm just going to fill in a cosine again cosine cubed of x, cosine cubed of x, divided by 3 minus cosine to the fifth of x, divided by 5 plus c, right? So we have these two guys here. Okay, uh, so that, that's a, a very typical example. Um, the first few that you see of these are, are somewhat confusing but the more you do that it makes it makes perfect perfectly good sense uh, let me just give you kind of an overview one more time what we did here you have lots of sines lots of cosines you find the term who has an odd power you save him as the du then everything else should be an even power and everybody else who has an even power you can convert into the other guys if necessary right um, but as long as one at least one of these guys has an odd power they don't even both have to uh, be odd J just one of them save that as the du and then convert those even remaining powers into the other guy then you have a function of u du you do u substitution you integrate you get your answer you put your choice of u back in there right and so that's that's how these work all right now there is one question remaining uh, all that stuff we just did there was based on the assumption that you have an odd power and so what do you do if both of the powers of sine and cosine are, are both even? Well, then you have to use something called a power reducing formula. This is something you studied in pre-calculus or trigonometry. And, uh, and basically they'll reduce the powers of sine and cosine to be not squared anymore, but reduced down to just single powers. And so here's, here's those um, power reducing formulas that we should know. So sine squared could be reduced to 1 minus cosine of 2x all divided by 2. And cosine squared um, reduces almost the same way, only it's 1 plus cosine 2x all divided by 2. And this is just something we have to commit to memory. There's not really, you know, there's not really any way, other way around it. Um, just like I just committed, uh, wrote these down from memory, uh, you'll have to know both of these from memory as well. Okay, and so that helps if both of your powers are even. All right, so let's quickly look at one last example. All right, so what if we had the integral of sine squared? That's it. So there's, here, there's not even a cosine. 
this this initially would be a very difficult integral you you can't save a sine because this is an even power and so even if you broke it up into like sine x times sine x it doesn't help you can't well i guess you could convert the sine squared into a cosine squared but that's not really any better that doesn't help either so in, in short there's no u and du uh, but because all we have is even powers here's what we can do we can use that power reducing formula and write this as the integral of 1 minus cosine of 2x all divided by 2. I see the uh, the 1 half um, in the denominator. Well, I see the 2 in the denominator. So that's a common factor of a half of the whole thing. So I can pull a 1 half outside the, the entire integral. And what's left on the inside is 1 minus cosine of 2x dx should have dx in this integral as well and this is integrable this isn't squared that's why the power reducing formulas work so well and so I'll, I'll write our final answer up here um, just for time's sake this video is taking a long time uh, let me just do this integral and then you can you, you can obviously check me but this integral would be one half uh, times the quantity um, integral of one is x and the integral of minus cosine 2x would be minus 1 half sine of 2x plus c. Okay, so, uh, so that's what we did right there. You can check my, my algebra on that, uh, but again, I'm just trying to save a little time here. So if you wanted to simplify this, you could say 1 half x minus 1 fourth sine 2x plus c if you distributed the one half through, you know, to both of the individual terms. So this will be our final answer. And again, this is what you do when all the powers of the sines and or cosines are even power reducing formula, then you can integrate.